Hello and welcome to the presentation on first order transient circuits. Let me write that down. First order transient circuits. So first off, let's just talk about this name real quick. First order, uh, because we're going to write a differential equation in this video. We're going to deal with differential equations. And pretty much what we're going to get is we're going to get a first order differential equation. The highest derivative in our differential equation is going to be the first derivative. And it also turns out that uh, what we're going to have in this, uh, in this example we're going to do, we're only going to have one element in our circuit that's capable of storing energy. So for that reason, and, and also uh, our circuit can be described by one first order differential equation. So that's why it's called a first order problem, because the highest derivative in the differential equation is going to be the first derivative, and we're also going to have only one energy storing element in the circuit. The next part of this name, transient, is because we're going to be looking at something, we're going to be trying to figure out something that's going to decay pretty quickly. So keep in mind, all the examples we've kind of been doing so far, all that, you know, we, you've seen so far in a circuits class, we've had circuits that, you know, kind of look like, I'll just draw a quick example like this. So we've had circuits that have looked something like this, right? We've had an input voltage and some configuration of resistors. And you've been asked questions about, like, find the voltage across this resistor or the current going through that resistor or the current in a certain branch of the circuit. And you would come up with a number, right? If I asked you for V0 here, then you would get, you know, a number. Like, say it was, you know, 4.2 volts. Say you got that as, as the answer here. And it was, you know, 4.2 volts for this configuration for as long as this source was turned on and the circuit looked like it was in this configuration. What we're going to do when we deal with first order transient circuits and transient circuits in general is we're, the answer is generally not going to be a number like we have here. The answer that we're going to be looking for, it's always going to be some voltage out or some current out as a function of time. And typically, that, uh, that solution that we're going to have is going to, uh, at least for the next bunch of videos, that solution we're going to have is going to kind of decay pretty quickly. We're going to be looking for an effect that's going to kind of uh, be over pretty quickly. It's not going to take too long for the circuit to get into kind of a steady configuration. So anyway, with all of that, let me actually, I'm just going to erase this up here. And then we can get started with the first order transient circuit. Just erase, 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 erase. And okay, there we go. So for our first order transient circuit, we're going to look at this circuit. So I've got a voltage source. Now I'm going to do this in complete general terms. I'm just going to say that I have a voltage source VI for V in and the voltage source comes up here, and then I'm going to have a switch along with one resistor and one capacitor. So I've got a switch right here, this is my resistor R, and this is my capacitor C. And what happens is this switch is going to close at T is equal to zero. So imagine that this circuit has been in the configuration with the switch open. And, and when the switch is open, current is not going to flow through the circuit. This branch up here is going to be held at the voltage VI, but if, and also let's call this ground. But everywhere else in the circuit is going to be pretty much grounded, right? No current is allowed to flow through either the capacitor or the resistor. So therefore, we're going to have a voltage of zero here, a voltage of zero here. We're going to have a voltage of zero across each of these two elements, and current is not going to be allowed to flow through the circuit. But then right at time is equal to zero, this switch is going to close, right? And when that switch closes, our circuit would look, would look like this, right? We are going to have the uh, voltage source is going to... Uh, pretty much start 
uh, it's going. We're going to have a a voltage here on uh, this left side of the resistor, and what we want to know is we want to know. Let me actually draw the switch back in. There, there's our switch. Close the time is equal to zero. We want to know what is the output voltage across this capacitor going to look like as a function of time for all time greater than zero. That is what we are trying to figure out with this first order transient problem. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use really the, the number one tool that we use for pretty much all of circuit analysis. We're going to use nodal analysis. And remember that nodal analysis always deals with we're going to be solving for a nodal voltage, which that's what we're asked, being asked for here. We're being asked for V out. And the big thing that you always have to remember, always remember when you're dealing with uh, nodal analysis, is all the current that flows into a node has got to be equal to all the current that flows out of the node. So we can't create a uh, current inside of a node. All, or you can, you can imagine that current or charge needs to be conserved in each node. And now, let's choose, we could, uh, there are a couple of different nodes, well even, actually not really, we, we know the node voltage, let me actually redraw the circuit here. So, I'm going to redraw the circuit with the switch closed. So this is what the circuit looks like if time is equal to zero. Our switch has now been closed. And keep in mind, this whole node right here, we know what the voltage is going to be here, right? That voltage is going to be VI, because this is grounded on the minus side of our, of our voltage source. And the positive side is just going to be held at a voltage VI by this source right here. And we also know on this side of the capacitor, that's ground, so all of this is ground. So we only have one unknown node voltage, and that's going to be right here. And it just so happens that this node voltage is going to be V out, right? If we say that that's positive, that's negative, the, of the, the V out that we want to measure. If the negative side is ground, so that's at zero volts, then the positive side up here, this unknown node voltage right here, that is going to be V out. So now let's go ahead and let's just choose current direction. So we're going to say that current is going to flow from left to right across our resistor. And current is also going to flow from the top to the bottom across our capacitor. One thing I kind of like to think about, like I, I'm saying current is flowing across the capacitor right now. You almost want to think more about for this problem, well, anyway, I'll, I'll do a video on this in the future about the intuition that you should gain from doing a first order transient problem. But keep in mind, this capacitor, pretty much what it looks like is exactly what's drawn here, right? We've got two parallel plates here. These wires are not connected to each other, right? It's like if we had charge going through here, charge can't like cross through the capacitor, right? You, so if you're having a direct current, uh, if you if you're having direct current, current's not really flowing through the capacitor. It's more flowing onto the capacitor. That's more, I guess, what's happening. Uh, but anyway, uh, for right now, let's just say. I'll, I'll do a video more about that in the future. Kind of, they'll help you build up the intuition behind this. Right now, let's just try to work through the mechanics of the problem. So right now, let's go ahead and do our nodal analysis. So right now, what goes into our node, V0 here, is this current. We're going to call this current IR because it's the current that flows through the resistor. And what flows out of that node is going to be this current that flows across or, or uh, uh, onto our capacitor. And we're just going to call that IC. So by nodal analysis, we know, and by uh, conservation of charge and conservation of uh, current, we know that what goes in has to be equal to what goes out. IR flows in. So IR flows into our node. And IC is what flows out of the node. So now. Using Ohm's law, 
How can we rewrite our IR? Well, we know that our current is flowing, current always flows from the positive side to the negative side. That's going to be our positive voltage is going to be on kind of the starting side of our current. The negative voltage is going to be on the ending side of our current. So we know that the voltage across this resistor, and we also know that the voltage on this side of the resistor is going to be at VI. So all of this over here, that's all at the voltage VI. So we know that our voltage across the resistor is going to be VI minus V0. That is going to be the voltage across the resistor. And keep in mind, if we want the current, keep in mind V is equal to IR, if we want the current through the resistor, we have got to take the voltage difference divided by our resistance to give us our current. So this IR is going to be equal to VI minus V0 divided by our resistance R. That's going to be the current that flows through our resistor. So that's the left-hand side of our nodal equation, or our nodal analysis equation. And now we have to set that equal to the current that flows through or the current that flows onto our capacitor, our IC. Now, the way we're going to figure this out is what is, what is capacitance equal to? Remember that a capacitor, uh, ca our capacitance C of an element, is going to be equal to the amount of charge that we can get onto that element per unit of voltage. So pretty much our capacitance is, is the amount of charge divided by, uh, divide, or the amount of charge on an element uh, divided by the amount of voltage across that element. So now I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply both sides by, by V. So I'm going to end up with C times V is going to be equal to Q. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this equation. So now if I do that, keep in mind that the derivative with respect to time of Q, that's, that's current, right? Like the amount that a charge in a given area is going to change, that's going to be what our current is. Current, you can, you know, I, we probably don't necessarily think about this way all the time, but current is just, we're just talking about how is the charge changing or how is the charge rearranging itself in a given element over a period of time. That's what current is. So therefore, let me just go ahead and rewrite, rewrite this again. We have got uh, d by dt of, of uh, c times v is going to be equal to dq dt, which we know is just going to be equal to our current as a function of time. So that hopefully, hopefully that's sort of intuitive for you. Maybe I'll do a little bit more on that in the future, helping you build up the intuition there. That uh, that current is really just looking at how does the charge change uh, over a period of time. How does the charge sort of rearrange itself over the period of time, or how how does the charge move over over a period of of time. So uh, anyway, that is, uh, that's the, I, I guess, the right-hand side of the equation. For the left-hand side of the equation, if we're taking the derivative of C times V, let me ask you, is C going to change? Is our capacitance going to change? And hopefully you can see that it's not, right? C is just, it's like the, the name, I shouldn't even say it's the nameplate value, but if we had a capacitor here, our C is just the nameplate value of the capacitor. It's not like you're putting more, uh, it's not like you're putting larger plates into the capacitor, changing the, dielect the uh, dielectric material in the capacitor or anything like that. Your capacitance value is not going to change. So therefore, because the C is a constant, it can just come outside of this derivative operator, and we are left with C times the derivative of the voltage, so C times dV dt, 
is going to be equal to the current through that capacitor. So this is our relationship that's going to give us, uh, give us the relationship of current through the capacitor, current onto the capacitor, uh, as it relates to the voltage across, across the capacitor. So this is, if we have IC as a function of time, that is going to be equal to our capacitance C times the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor with respect to time. So therefore, let me just go ahead and put that into our equation right now. So now we know that the current through the capacitor, the current onto the capacitor, is going to be equal to our capacitance value C times the derivative of the voltage across our capacitor with respect to time. And now the very last part, what is the voltage that's across our capacitor? Well, it's our V out, right? It's the voltage that we're looking for. So it's C D V out with respect to time. So now let's just go ahead and rearrange this equation just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by, uh, by R. So let me even, I'll just write that in. I'm going to multiply both sides by R. So they cancel here and we get VI minus V0 is going to be equal to RC D V0 DT. And now the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add V0 to both sides of this equation. So let me just go ahead and do that. VI is equal to RC D V0 DT plus V0. So now we have got our first order differential equation. So now it's sort of like at this point in the problem, you can take off your uh, you can take off uh, your circuit analysis hat, I guess, and put on your differential equations hat, because really what we're going to do now to solve the rest of this problem is we're going to take a differential equations approach. Uh, we, well, we just have to solve this differential equation, and then we're going to get our answer. Uh, so anyway, I'm over time on this video, so I'm going to end here. And the next video, we're going to solve this and hopefully get uh, the answer to the problem. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.